This is Easton Jackson again. In this video, we're going to do an overview of a new tool that eClinical Works has just released to help with the transition from ICD-9 to ICD-10. This deals specifically with problem lists and converting those from ICD-9 to ICD-10. I've previously done a couple of videos on this process, but they've released a tool which makes this much faster and more efficient, which we're going to go over here. I have two fake patients on my schedule today and they both have some diagnoses with ICD-9 codes. So first I'm going to open up the first patient like normal. Now to use this tool that they've created you'll need to go to the patient's hub. So this can be done as part of a patient uh, visit or it can be done outside a patient visit because you just need to get to the hub. So I'm going to open the patient's hub and you'll see this new button called PL9 to 10. That's problem list 9 to 10 uh, and it's a conversion utility. If we take a look on this patient, you can see she has four diagnoses here. These are all ICD-9 codes. In addition, um, the physician who has done these has added onset dates. They've added diagnostic specific notes and a lot of detail, which is really helpful. And you can see those here. If we open up the problem list itself, here are the problems. If I want to see the notes for concussion, I can click on here and we can see that she hit her head at a concert and the date that it happened. This is very helpful information. Similarly, uh, here's a heart failure diagnosis, and you can see their last echocardiogram, the ejection fraction, and when it was done. Valuable information. With the manual process to convert codes, which was required previously, none of this information would be saved, and you'd actually have to copy-paste it from the old to the new, which was really laborious. With this tool, we can start with the problem list, and you simply click the PL 9 to 10 button. A new window opens up. Now you'll see there's two options for the GEMS mapping, which is an ICD-9 to ICD-10 mapping tool, or if you've also subscribed to the IMO um, mapping tool, you can use this as well. I'm first going to gems demonstrate the GEMS mapping. So first, I simply click on concussion, and it gives me the option here that uh, it has mapped over as most likely. If I like this, I can simply click it, and it's copied over. I'm going to go to headache, and I can continue selecting these. Let's go to hypertension, map it over, and then heart failure. Notice heart failure has a lot more options, so you'll uh, want to take a look more specifically. As you can see, the ICD-9 code 428.0 maps over to a lot of ICD-10 codes for heart failure, so you need to pick the one that is appropriate. I'm going to select this one. If you've clicked one and decided that that's not the correct one or it's not the most appropriate code, you can simply click undo and it will undo it, put it back to ICD-9, and you have the option to go reselect a new code. Once you've done this, you simply hit close. And now, notice that it doesn't look like it's changed yet. You have to refresh the window. You can either do that by closing and reopening the hub, or you can simply click another tab, and when you click back, you'll see that it is now refreshed, and look, it's the ICD-10 codes that I just chose, and the ICD-9 codes are now removed from the active problem list. If we go back here to the problem list itself, you can now see the details. Here's the new headache code, and here is the same information, the same onset date that was there before. So this is a tremendous time saver. This is a great tool that eClinical uh, Works has released. I'm going to demonstrate the same thing on one other patient. On our second fake patient here, I'm again going to open up the hub. So again, you can do this as part of an office visit or outside an office visit. On the hub, we can see four diagnoses here. Again, ICD-9 codes. Just to confirm, there are notes in all of these. There are onset dates and risks listed in some of them. I'm going to click the PL9 to 10 button. This time, I'm going to use IMO because our clinic subscribes to the IMO um, product, which, as an aside, I would highly recommend it. It's definitely worth the seven bucks a month that it costs you. What I can see on AFib is it gives me a bunch of options here. All of these uh, our map over from this one ICD-9 code and if you use IMO then you'll know about the blue hyperlinks. In this case I can click the blue hyperlink, open up the IMO code and I can choose the exact one. In this case I'm going to say chronic AFib. It gives me the option and I hit OK. Now I'm going to go to the AAA it only lists one option here. Again, I could just select it, but I'm typically going to choose the blue hyperlink so I can see if there are other options here, which there are in this case. I'm going to choose without rupture. Select it and hit OK. 
hypertension, very similar. Um, most of the time hypertension is I-10 unless it's a specific uh, secondary cause, so I'm just going to pick hypertension here. And finally, looks like we have it on here twice uh, because this is a fake patient, so what the heck, we'll just pick another one and say this one's due to a medication instead. Now I've added them on there, they're mapped over. Again, I could click undo if I think I've assigned the wrong one. I can go ahead and close it. Again, I need to refresh my hub. It's not going to show it until I do something to refresh this window. In this case, I'm going to close the hub, I'm going to reopen it, and you can see now the ICD-10 codes are there, the ICD-9 codes are gone, and again we can confirm that the notes are all here, the onset date, the risk, anything that I've added before has been carried over automatically rather than having to do the manual process. If you or your nurses have been doing the manual process to convert it over, especially in a busy family medicine or internal medicine clinic with complex patients, you know that this is going to be a huge time saver. Now, if you open up your hub and you don't see this button, that could mean a couple of things. If you are hosting your own hardware like we do at our clinic, uh, you need to talk to your account manager and have them install this. This is a server-side patch. They only need to get onto the server to install it. There's nothing required on the client. And then as soon as the client logs back in, they'll see this button. Um, if eClinicalWorks is hosting your um, ECW installation instead, uh, they have probably already installed it into production. If they haven't, I would ask the account manager and ask how soon you can get this because it is definitely worth um, the time to get it done. Uh, it will save you a lot of time compared to the prior process. Thank